Brady Miller here. And today, well, maybe not today, to the next several different days and videos, I'm gonna be walking through A to Z, exactly the steps I go through when I set up a brand new rifle. So I have a Browning X-Bolt Long Range 6.8 Western with uh, the Max stock in Ovix camo. And I'm just gonna basically run through exactly how I'm gonna set this gun up. So I'm actually taking this gun on a javelina hunt. Got some friends from Montana coming down. And this is just how I set up a gun from, you know, this is the line production gun. So it's not gonna be anything too crazy, but how to put a pick rail on it, how to mount a scope, how to adjust a trigger, everything on this gun. I'm gonna walk through A to Z and then also take it in the field, get it sighted in, get it dialed and go on a javelina hunt. So like I said earlier, we're going to be walking through how I set up a Picatinny rail on this first one. And so I like to actually bed my Picatinny rail on the action. There's a million different ways to do this. This is just a way that works well for me. Some things that, you know, my dad taught me back in the day. I've incorporated some of his tips. I've kind of expanded on a little bit. And I like to bed a pick rail on here because basically what I'm doing is trying to eliminate all inconsistencies and different variables because sometimes I put pick, pick rails on here you can kind of, you know, torque a little side on the back screw, the front screw, and it's a little bit of flex in that rail. So I'm trying to eliminate everything. I want a square, perfect surface. And like I do with everything when it comes to rifles or a bow for that matter, is I'm trying to pump out as much accuracy as I can. So that's why I go through all these small steps. Sure, they might take a little bit more time, but I think in the end, you're gonna get a better product for it. So right now I just got my gun mounted in a pattern maker's vice i believe that's what it's called if i remember right vice i picked up quite a few years ago just works really good for working on a gun setting up scopes doing different things here in my man cave so there's going to be a lot of little tools and items you're going to need to to do this process i'll try to run through them really quickly and then explain while i'm going through them but when i'm betting it i use jv weld again there's a million different people who would say this is probably bad this is the correct way to do it which is what works for me. So I've done it on a lot of guns. I've set up, unfortunately, set up a lot of my personal guns, family guns, friends' guns, and this is the exact steps I use. So it works, and I've proven it and tested it, so I'm going to keep doing it. So JB Weld works on there. And I will mention, too, that uh, if you're concerned about betting a pick rail on your rifle and you want to actually remove it later on, you should probably put a release agent on. You can use um, Johnson's Pace Wax or Kiwi, really cool thing about this Kiwi wax is when I bought my house, this guy who owned it before me must have loved polishing his shoes and actually have like 10 different jars of Kiwi wax. So I try to use that a lot because I got it for free, he left it in the garage. So these are two things you can just rub everywhere on the action to try to make it so you can release it off later. But again, I my mentality is I'm gonna keep that Picatinny rail on here for the entire life of the rifle and also it's gonna just help it adhere and be perfect. So I will not put a release agent on there. So if you wanna do something different, probably not the video for you, but I'm gonna be mounting it on there to keep on there permanently. And if I do need to knock it off later, it's gonna take some work, some heat, blood, sweat, and tears to try to get off, but I'll be able to get it off. But for me, again, just makes it all perfectly clean and smooth. Have a lot of Q-tips here for some cleanup, a little straight edge, just to make sure the rail's all square. Got some acetone to kind of clean off all the oils. Non-chlorinated brake cleaner. Probably don't need both of these, but I just like to use a combination of both. A little shop rag, paper towels, scissors to cut some of the Q-tips. I have a little, uh, I don't know what you call it, painter's brush for uh, doing some of the paste wax stuff to get on the screws. And then I have a T15, little T-handle wrench here, or you could also use you know, any sort of torque driver. I just definitely don't right now use my torque wrench during this process because I'm just lightly putting it on here and then you'll see why when you get through that. And then I have this really old nail. As you can see here, I have bedded a million different rifles with it and I never clean off the compound at the end. I'm probably on my third nail by now, but I just use this to uh, stir up all the JB Weld. And of course I have a little flathead screwdriver to get open the paste and just some sort of little small cardboard or something like that to actually mix the JB weld. Oh, a couple toothpicks. These are gonna be helpful for uh, cleaning up everything after the fact. And while I'm building a rifle, what I like to really do is I wanna stay organized throughout this whole process. So I do keep all of my accessories, scope levels, rings, rails, 
that sort of thing in here. That way I know everything is going to go on this rifle and it's nice and organized because as you can see a reloading bench or a man cave room can get pretty disorganized really quickly. So I just like to keep everything organized. So now we're going to jump into actually assembling everything on this rifle. So you can see here it's brand new, tightening in the vise. Doesn't need to be perfectly level or anything like that, but you kind of want to make sure it's just slightly level so that the glue will, you know, dry properly or not the glue, the epoxy. And I'm going to pop off these little things that just came from shipping from Browning. And this is a step right now where I'm going to want to clean this off just to make sure there's no oils. As you see with me touching it even, that's going to add oils on there. It's not going to make the uh, JB weld adhere to it properly. So I'm going to want to clean all that off. And like I said, I like to do a combination of a couple different cleaning methods. You probably don't have to do both of these, but for me it works. I'm trying to get this all over my carpet, but... So I'm just cleaning it off. Ooh, first step first, probably should remove the bolt. Safety first. And another reason why I remove the bolt too, I just don't want a chance to anything to get on there. Like this is not a very messy process, but if you do overdo it, you could have a bunch of seepage going off the side. I don't really want to get it anywhere where it's gonna be hard to clean up later. Here's gonna be my rail. It's just a 20 MOA pick rail from and tally and you're going to want to always make sure you get the correct size of short action long action or magnum depending on you know whatever action you have or whatever brand you're going with and always a good idea too just to test everything out make sure it fits and this is the time where if i really wanted to prove it to myself i could you know put some of these screws in here and torque it down and see if i have any flex but i know i'm going to bed it anyway so i'm not going to really worry about that part right now but and then, of course, we can, uh, I'll just, I guess, show you guys that process. Usually I have a little container that I always try to keep around as well. I dump all these screws in. That way I don't lose them. So just for fun, we're going to mock this on here. Which is also a good idea just to make sure everything's straight and square. Just gonna put two of them on. So all I'm really doing right now is just visualizing that my rail is square. I've used tally rings for a long, long time, and everything is perfectly squared. There's not a bow in it. You never know when you get something from a manufacturer. It could have flex, that sort of thing. So I always verify it with that. My dad was always big on, you know, drag racing, and so he always tells me to double check and triple check everything before I build it. So there's a little trick back in the day just to grab this, put it on here, check it out and continue with it to this day. There's actually no flex in it, but this is how you could test it. You can start moving these around and just start pushing on your rail to see if there's any flex, but I'm going to bet it no matter what. All right. Now, so I messed all that up, I'm just going to clean it again since I'm very concerned about making a good mating surface with this rail. And also, I want to get clean underneath the rail, clean all these surfaces up. And one more thing I've sometimes done before, I'll take my pick rail and take a Dremel. And sometimes I will Dremel out some of these surfaces just to rough them up a little bit. That way it can adhere on here a little bit easier. And I've even uh, roughed up the top part of my action because like I said, I just want this to mate perfectly, but I've kind of stopped doing this over the years because there actually might not be any real benefit to it. But now I got both these surfaces clean and now it's going to be a time when I'm going to want to um, take some of my paste wax, put the paste wax in the screws and kind of get those prepped because I want, because obviously I'm going to put JB weld on the rail and smash it down on here and try to avoid all the screw holes. But since Browning does have eight holes in these X bolts, I'm gonna make sure, you know, extra carefully that I don't get near the screw holes. But if I do get any in there, putting that uh, paste wax or kiwi on there is gonna prevent this from adhering to my action, which is not good. I've done that before. It was not fun, and I had to drill everything out and retap the action, and wasn't very smart. And I just touched the rail, so I'm cleaning it up again. That's how concerned I am about to make sure everything's clean. All right, now I'm going to open up my. Paste wax. 
I had a shop teacher back in the day who told me never to use a uh, flathead screwdriver to pry open anything. I would say I've never listened to his advice because I still do it this day because he said a flathead screwdriver is not meant for prying, it's meant for just screws only, but sorry shop teacher, but I don't do that anymore. It's kind of nice too about this pattern pattern maker's vice is I can kind of stack some things on there. Okay, this is where the brush comes in handy. I could just dip it in there, but as you can see, it just kind of like gets everywhere and I don't want to really drop it in and lose it. So I just go around, grab a bunch of it, and then put it on all the threads. And again, I'm trying to do this away from my action. And then just make sure those are all coated. I'm gonna do the same thing on all eight of these screws. All right, now I have all the screws coated in paste wax. Now I'm gonna to start to mix up the JB weld. I'm gonna use 50-50 mixture of it. And as you can see, sometimes it's really nice to keep a bunch of them handy. These are the small ones, sometimes you use these for different things. I recently purchased these giant dogs because I figure I do so many scopes, it's probably gonna be really beneficial just to have more of it. And it's cheaper in the long run. So I got these two big giant things of JB weld. So again, try to mix them 50-50. I just do two different lines down the center. All right, and so that's kind of what it looks like. Both the uh, steel and the hardener right next to each other. Now I'm gonna stir them up, and that's where uh, my little old nail comes into play, and I'm just gonna stir them up. I'm not gonna do that over the gun. I'm gonna do that over here. I'll show you what that looks like afterwards. And as you're stirring it up, definitely gonna change color. It's gonna go from black, white to a gray. Again, this is color basics from back in art school. When you mix two, is this a primary color? I don't know. And that's kind of what it's going to look like. Ooh, got a bunch of white up there. Let me get that in there. All right, that's all my JB Weld. Take this, put this on a paper towel somewhere else for now. And this is kind of when it's going to come into play having a toothpick. The toothpick works really nice. I just realized I do have a bunch of these uh, tongue depressors as well. So I'm actually going to probably use one of these. But if not, if you don't have any of these, you're going to want to take a little Q-tip cut the end off, and then you can actually use this to uh, scrape that and put it on there. Or you could use a little tongue, just tongue depressor and grab a bunch of that and throw it on. So now I'm going to apply it onto my rail. And again, I'm trying to avoid all the uh, screw holes. All right, during this process, I'm just grabbing small amounts and placing it on here. I'm just looking for a very thin layer, and a lot of this stuff will squeeze out. And this is where having the uh, Q-tip comes in handy because now I can kind of get this stuff, you know, in between all those screw holes. Doesn't have to be perfect. This is quite a bit already on here. But again, I just want a full contact, full mating surface between these two pieces. And I'm fine if it squirts out the side because we will do some cleanup after the fact. After you do these a bunch of times, you'll figure out the uh, correct you know, amount to put on here. And if you do have a really fancy gun and you don't want to get on the side, you could put some you know, paste wax on there to make the cleanup a little bit easier. I've just got some in my screw hole area. Since I'm talking. So I just alleviate that right now. I don't know if you can see that, but I got a little strand of it right there. So I'm just going to go underneath it and pull it out. Like everything with rifles, there is a absolute million ways to do this. Can't remember if I said before, some guys will say only do, what is it, the front, don't through the back. Hogwash, I like to do it all. So I'm trying to pump out as much accuracy as possible. And I kind of like this JB well because it doesn't have a very quick set time. So I can kind of do what I want and work around on this stuff. That part is done and now it's time for the scary part. So I want some of my tools handy. I want to have my little torque dealio, little T-wrench there. I want to have my screws handy right next to me. They already have the paste wax on it. I'm going to take this and when you drop this on there, you're going to want to make sure you have it in the right direction because this is the correct way. That is not the correct way. You can tell because of the lip on this one and the way it was curved before. If it's there and that's a flat area, curved flat. So I want to make sure you get this set in the right position. 
You basically want to look down the screw holes and kind of set it up or look off to the side. You don't want to set this on there and then slide it. If you set it on there and slide it, you can get all this JV weld through all those holes. And if you do have a different type of action too, that these holes go all the way down through, you probably could take some paste wax and uh, put it underneath there as well, just to prevent it from dropping down in there. But this one only has one spot like that and it's back here and I can clean that up later. So let's see if I can do this really well on camera. Carefully set it on there. Okay, I just let the pressure of the weight of the rail sit there. And now I'm going to grab these with my T15 little tool. And I'm not trying to go all the way in there and wrench it down right now. I am kind of going to follow a crisscross criss pattern if possible when I'm doing these. I started in the back, went to the front on the two middle ones, and I'm going to go on the outside on this one opposite of where I just went. Just want to get that in there and make sure I don't wrench these down and make some of this JB weld move around into those other thread areas. So I did that one earlier. Now I'm going to do this one over here. And I'm going to alternate, go back to the front again opposite where we just went, front side, drop it in there, move over to the back rail, back to the front, and then this last one. This is also where having some paper towels ready to go is going to come in handy because this is the part where you're going to have to uh, basically go finger tight on these just to, again, make sure it's fully flat, all that JB weld has been squeezed out. Like I said, you just want to do a thin layer when I put it on there so there's not going to be bunching. And I want to do this even because I don't want to create any sort of bow or flex in this rail right now. And I don't want to torque it all the way down and squirt everything out because that's going to defeat the purpose of this whole process. So I'm just going to start here, get a little bit tighter, move up here. Get a little bit tighter, come back here, a little bit tighter. And for the most part, you shouldn't ever have, that's why I like the T-handle, it does allow me to add a little bit more torque to it, but you really shouldn't need to do that during this process, unless you put a heaping spoonful of JB Weld on here. I'm just gonna do a little bit with my hand. I want to come back to the other one. All right, another just check again. Got to listen to my dad's advice. Just take this little flat edge, put it on there. Make sure there's no crazy bow. It's going to be kind of hard to see right now, but uh, that's just another reference point to put on there. So now if you can see here, we have a bunch of JB Weld all across both sides of the rail, front, back, in between here and it's kind of starting to leak into where my bolt goes down here where my bolt goes in on the back side and i got a bunch of stuff on the front and i'm just going to kind of let this stuff harden for 10 15 minutes right now that way when i peel some of this stuff off it kind of peels off easier like right now if i took my q-tip and uh, cut another q-tip i'm not going to use this one for example but if i took my q-tip right now and started doing this i would just smear it all across there it's going to get up on top of the rail get down in my action and that's just more stuff I have to clean up with my acetone later. So sometimes it's nice just to uh, let it harden for a little bit before I go in and clean everything up. So let's wait 10, 15 minutes and uh, come back in a little bit. So right now I've waited roughly 15 minutes and I believe I said it earlier, but I'm just kind of wait a little bit to make the uh, JB Weld set up a little bit more so it's a little easier to pull off in you know, a state that's not as liquidy, I guess you could say. So what I got here is a Q-tip. Again, I'm just gonna cut the end off the Q-tip because I wanna use this as a little, uh, just a little tool to dig in here. So I'm just gonna take this, put it right next to the rail and the action and start just moving it away and kind of spinning it as I'm doing it to then pull this off. And I probably could have waited a little bit more because it is still a little runny. It hasn't quite started to set up yet. I'm just trying to get some of this bulk stuff off. This will just help have a clean product at the end because look good, shoot good. 
I just smeared that a ton on that side, but that's all right. One thing that's sometimes hard to get and sometimes forget about is getting in the front here. Especially on these, if I ever want to change a barrel, I don't want to bleed over and, you know, get right in the area where I want to change a barrel from the action. So just make sure you get all clean. This is also a really good time to, to analyze if you've gotten any JB Weld on your stock because you're going to want to get that off before it fully hardens later. Otherwise, you're going to have a nice little sharp part on your stock that you're going to have to grind off with the Dremel. Don't ask me how I know. All right, you might have asked, Brady, you said you have some toothpicks. You haven't used them yet. Well, this is kind of now when I'll take the toothpicks and start to go around here and clean up even more. What I'm trying to avoid doing is wedging this underneath there. I don't want to break up the toothpick underneath my rail. It's not going to be a consistent uh, setup. I also don't want to go underneath there and gouge a bunch of that out because I want to make sure I have enough uh, JB Weld. But I'm just going to do take it right on the edge at a straight down angle and just run it down the side and clean it up really nice. Okay, this is probably one of the times in this process when we take it out of the vise. I'm going to flip it over carefully to not try to bang anything around on it though. Just so I can see underneath it, I can see inside the action, make sure I didn't get anything in there. Clean off the side. You can see, probably can't see really well, but when I flip this over, there's a bunch of JV weld right here. I'm just going to take the Q-tip and clean it up. Even though no one's going to see it, I will see it. And I will know it's there if I don't clean it up and it will bug me. And since I already have the uh, rifle up, I'm going to look inside here and actually take a headlamp and just make sure I don't have anything in there. What I'm really trying to do is look for this one, there's one spot right in here that I could have got some JB Weld gone into the action. So just to be careful and make sure that screw didn't push any down, take my Q-tip in here and kind of run across the top and I don't have any on there, so that's a good sign. And you can also just take your finger in there and just kind of make sure there's nothing there. And when we pull this off later, we'll be able to actually see if I got compound down there. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I need to do a little bit more cleanup, but I want to wait until this dries a little bit more because I don't want to be taking a bunch of acetone. I usually have this little dropper vial. Dip this in here and I want to clean this up on the edges, but I don't want to have all this wet acetone just leak all over there and get underneath there and start to attack all the JV weld that I'm trying to harden and cure. So I'll let this dry a little bit and then come back and clean this up. I might take some and clean up the outside right now, but I don't want to go right on the edge right now and actually clean it up because, I, like I said, I don't want to get acetone underneath there. So I'm actually just going to clean up this one spot right here because I have a big mess I kind of created on this side. So I'm just going to paint on some acetone, staying away from the actual area I'd, I worked on. And if you are concerned about acetone on your action, Maybe put some of that paste wax on, but I don't really care if it discolors it. This is a hunting rifle. It's not a rifle to win beauty awards, but like I said, a nice looking rifle does shoot better, so I want to try to keep it clean. But if it discolors a little bit, I'm not too worried. This could also be a time right now where I take another Q-tip or take a paper towel or a rag, kind of dip in some acetone, and maybe up on top here, you know, maybe you got some JB Weld on there. You want to just clean up all your sections of the pick rail. And I don't have a lot on there. That's why I'm comfortably dropping it through all the uh, holes on the rail and just pulling it up. Just to make sure I don't have it on there because that way when I mount my scope, it ain't going to mount properly. It ain't going to be square. Last step in this process. So I've let this kind of dry another 30, 45 minutes. Now I just really want to take Q-tip, dip it in the acetone, and now I'm comfortable with going along the edge a little bit tighter just to clean up all the extra JB Weld. And then we're good to let this go. 
And what I like to do is, since again, there's no rush when you're working with precision items, and since this is gonna be a precision weapon, I'm not gonna take this off in a couple hours. I'm gonna let this sit for at least 24 hours to fully ensure that everything is hardened, cured, perfectly square. I'm not gonna to touch this gun. Just let it do its thing right now and completely dry. Keeping it also, you know, as level as I can right now, just to make sure all the glue, or not glue, again, the epoxy dries in a uniform fashion. And I'll stop waving my hands around when I'm doing this too, but yeah. Just trying to make sure everything's square, let it dry for 24 hours, and then I will loosen the screws and pop them off. Which I should easily come off because those are all coated in the floor wax. And then we'll go in mount scope. So that was part one. Basically all we did is take a brand new Browning X-Bolt 6.8 Western rifle and walk through how to bed Picatinny rail on the action. So again, this is just exactly how I do it. There's a million other ways you could do it. I don't care what's right or wrong. I know this works for me, tested it, and it's repeatable and holds up. So it's how I do it and I hope you enjoyed it.